How do you feel about the Ballon d'Or? Or how do you feel about individual awards given out for accomplishments in a team sport in general? Well, I'll be navigating you through my personal opinion of them, and hopefully you'll share yours as well in the comments section. By the way, I'm Adrian, and thanks for joining us, and this is Rona TV. To start, in response to Luka Modric winning this year's Ballon d'Or, I was curious to see what people on Twitter and my own subscribers thought of the results. On Twitter, where I barely even have a following on there, from 69 votes, minuscule, I know, 62% of voters thought that Luka Modric was not the best player in the world last season. On YouTube, the numbers were stacked against him even further. From about 3,600 votes, 70% of voters didn't think that Luka Modric was the best player in the world last season. And just another curiosity that has come out since the awarding of the Ballon d'Or, alongside Twerkgate, of course. Est-ce que tu sais twerker? No. <laughs> <laughs> is the seemingly shoddy vote counting, or perhaps it's nothing at all, but Lasana Lieber tweeted that his votes were actually counted in the wrong order. France Football said that he voted for Griezmann, Salah, Cristiano, Modric, and Messi in that order, while Lasana himself says that France Football must have counted them backwards, because he actually voted for Messi to be the player of the year, with Modric, Ronaldo, Salah, and Griezmann following suit. So that begs the question, was this an isolated incident? Were there other votes that were miscounted? Was Liber just confused by the voting card? Despite having voted for this award numerous times in the past, this wasn't his first Ballon d'Or. Or did France Football indeed count his votes correctly, but just published it incorrectly while disclosing the votes? Whatever the case may be, it does little to help this year's iteration of the award, with some claiming that it makes it even more of a farce than it already was. It feels like this year, more than any other in recent history, most people seemingly don't care for the Ballon d'Or and the FIFA The Best Awards. But I'm not here to contest whether Modric deserved it or not, he's a brilliant player. As the notion of deserved it is multifaceted and confusing, which is exactly what I will be exploring in this video. So first off, are we awarding talent or are we awarding results? Because despite this award being given to the best player, whatever that means, it often ends up being an award for the most impactful player within a championship winning team, the most popular player, extra points if that team was competing in the Champions League or the World Cup. There are so many players on the 30-man shortlist that have individually, keyword being individually, had inferior years to other players who made the list based on the triumphs of their team. I won't go through them, as I already did a video on my personal picks that should have made the list, so you can check that out if you like and tell me how great of a player Mario Mandzukic is. <laughs> I know he's good guys, I just prefer other players over him, and that's okay for me to prefer that, just as it's okay for you to prefer him over other players. So anyways, that bears the question, how do we quantify what makes the best player of the year? The Ronaldo and Messi era, given their dominance, pretty much distorted the way in which we sort of quantified talent. With each player head and shoulders above the rest of their peers for eight years solid, probably longer than that, you could even put up a decent argument that they are still the top two players in the game today. We needed something tangible, however, in order for us to separate the two players when it came to choosing a winner for the Ballon d'Or or World Player of the Year. Well, to break down what became the accepted formula to its most simple terms, it would look something like stats, mainly goals, but assists only make the case stronger as well, plus trophies won equals player of the year. The reason for this being, as I said, the need of those giving the award to have something tangible for us to grasp onto when understanding their reasoning for giving it to Ronaldo on one occasion and Messi on another. And while I see the reasoning for doing so, and I also accepted this sort of formula for the most part, there was always the feeling that it's basically turned the individual award for the best football player of the year to the award for the best attacker of the year, or further yet, the best attacker within a side that won trophies within a given year. Bonus points if it's a World Cup year. Central midfielders like an N'Golo Kante don't get a shout a guy who propelled Leicester to a Premier League title only for them to fall apart after he leaves them, then help a team like Chelsea go from crisis to champions, then play an integral role in France's World Cup victory, he doesn't come anywhere close to even making the podium. And no, I'm not saying that he should have won over Luka Modric, but he was barely even considered. He was ahead of Neymar in the voting at 11th place though, so he can Take that for what it is. Or how about someone like Rafael Varane, who helped Real Madrid to yet another Champions League title, helped France win the World Cup, etc, etc. He finishes 7th. 
the highest rated defensive player by a long shot. As far as defenders and keepers go, the next highest rated is Thibaut Courtois in 14th. The last time a defender won this award, 2006. 12 years ago when Fabio Cannavaro won it. And that's one of the biggest problems with individual awards. How do you compare attacking statistics versus defensive statistics? With goals, it's easy to see how much of an impact a player has had for his team versus how much of an impact another player has had. There's a number for that, just as there's a number for how many times he or she has set up a teammate. But how do you compare a goal scored with a match-saving tackle? Because how things stand now, a goal is weighed far more heavily than a tackle to keep your team in the game, or a match-saving one-on-one save for a keeper. Put it this way, how do you determine who the better player is between the top goalkeeper in the world and the best striker in the world? They operate in completely opposite ways on the pitch and therefore have completely different stats that can act simply as a guide to how well they performed, stats that are completely incomparable. How can you say that one player who's at the peak in his position is better than the other player who's at the peak in his position? And hey, there's another discrepancy right there. Many people don't remember the tackles or saves that saved their team when they were leading, and only remember the ones that preserved a lead or a draw. So, those other important tackles and saves are forgotten, while the pointless goals scored by players when their team is already leading by a few goals all count towards their final goal tally, which in turn helps their case to win an award. So to quantify things, how many goals scored while your team is already winning equal to that of a defender getting their positioning perfect and putting their body on the line to block a shot during a match? Because as of right now, it seems as though it's weighed heavily in favor of the guy who scores an extra two or three goals against relegation fodder as opposed to the defenders and central midfielders that shut said scorers down for 75% of their scoring chances. I think that things like this are why some are just relieved to see a midfielder get some recognition as opposed to a scorer this year. Even if, as the people say, they don't believe that he was the best player in the world last season in the polls that I created, which had a data pool of about 3,750 people. And speaking of the relevance of goals, let's talk about that for a while now. Let's take a player like Chiro Immobile and the incredible 2017-18 season he had both domestically and in the Europa League. Hey! Hang on, did you say Europa League? Well, yes I did because he was playing in that competition because he plays for Lazio, but this is an individual award, right? I mean, you can only play against the teams in front of you, so if he killed it in the Serie A and the Europa League, those are two pretty respectable competitions, you know? It's not like he was bossing it in the Luxembourgish League or something like that. No, you just said he played in the Europa League. Therefore, his individual achievements, no matter how good they were, count for nothing. Even if what he did individually for this award was greater than what many players on the 30-man shortlist did individually. If he played on a better team, then we could consider his incredible stats of 41 goals and 11 assists and just 53 appearances. But sorry, Chiro, until your team does well, no matter how well you do, you won't be considered. Despite outscoring most attackers on the list and in general playing at a level above others on the list as well. If your country had managed to qualify for the World Cup or your fifth place Serie A side had won the Europa League, then maybe. Maybe. You see where I'm coming from here? You see where I'm building this opinion from? For an individual award, by simply looking at the numbers, you don't get the full story. By simply looking at the teams who won or had success, you cut out great individuals who individually may have had a better year than the guy who ends up winning it because his team won a trophy. How are we supposed to make sense of a trophy awarded to an individual in a team sport? Anyways, I hope that my rambling made sense for at least half of this video. If I got that, then I'm okay with it. Please do let me know your thoughts on individual awards in football because it would be great to hear what the overall opinion is on the matter. I'm sure it's pretty split. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then a like is appreciated and a subscription is just spoiling me. I'm Adrian. This is Rabona TV from the western coast of Canada, and I will see you in the next video, hopefully. Peace!